Hi, I'm Cory, and I like to paint Hindu gods. Right now I'm painting Narasimha, fourth avatar of Vishnu. This is a typical depiction of him, and was donated to me by my buddy who owns Sigmarite Boutique, because it had some printing errors, and he couldn't sell it. Cool. Thanks, Dave. And this isn't a tutorial. I wanted to show the way I paint when I'm just kind of vibing and enjoying the process not for batch painting or a tutorial or anything like that. And generally, when I paint large figures for myself, I start off with oils because they're easy to blend, they give quick results, and they make great base coats. I'm using a fairly light touch and more over painting than dry brushing letting colors blend together. I'm just randomly muddling around different shades of dark umber, ochre, and whatever else kind of looks like it might go on, well, a line. If things start to get too thick, it's easy enough just to grab a sponge and wipe away any of the high points before going over it with whatever I'm going to use for my highlight color, which is pretty much just what I already have on the palette with a little bit of white or yellow added to it. Painting these pants yellow, I didn't realize at the time the pre-shading was too dark. I ended up touching it up later. No worry though, that wasn't the worst thing to happen. It isn't until much later that I realized I broke off that uh, little finger there dropping it. Oh well, that's what green stuff's for. You can see the problem I'm having there. I'm having to add more and more paint. A uh, problem I always end up having with yellow. And someday I'll learn my lesson and remember to base coat those areas with white. Uh, but not today. Once the base coat of blue is on this robe here, you can see why I love painting with oil paints so much. All I do is add a little bit more white to my brush and progressively drag it over the top of the blue. And it looks like something that would take a ton of glazing and work to do traditionally with acrylics. With the pants, I tried something a little bit different this time, and I honestly probably just need more practice. But I coated them with kind of a gray with a little bit of blue added to it, and just add progressively white as I moved up to the highlights. Uh, things were starting to get a little bit chunky, so I wiped away some of the excess. I think the problem I ran into is honestly, I was just being a little too heavy handed with the brush and adding too much. So this is the start of the non-metallic metal gold that I do. Um, I'm getting better at it, and I'm not going to show absolutely everything uh, during this video just because there is a lot of gold on this guy, but I did the same thing that I always do, is I put on the base coat properly, or, or like I should, but then when I put on the uh, medium layer and the highlights, I don't do enough. I always end up leaving my base coat to be anywhere from like a quarter to a sixth of what's showing on my non-metallic metal gold, but it really should be way less than that. It should be like a, like a tenth. And most of the gold should be kind of reflective and sparkly. And you'll see what I mean near the end of the model. I'm happy with it, but room for improvement.
So you can see a good example of what I was talking about earlier uh, with the circular thing behind his head. The top's fine, but the undersides are almost completely brown. There should be more brown, obviously, on the bottom, but they're completely brown. If you flip it upside down and look up, you could mostly see brown. And I should have just gone a little bit heavier on the underside of things. So as I'm moving up in my highlights, I'm getting smaller in the area I cover and I'm adding more white to my mixture. I'll end up adding oranges and reds later when I switch over to acrylics, but this is just to set my base layer up. I go back to some of the items I was working on earlier, and now that the paint has set up a little bit, um, dried seems like the wrong word, but it does seem to dry a little bit. I go back with a completely dry brush with no mineral spirits, and I just start blending those elements together. Um, and this kind of pulls it all in. I don't know what it is, but I really like mixing flesh tones together. It's very satisfying. I actually find skin to be rather forgiving with oil paints. Our skin is already kind of a mishmash of different tones and colors, so you don't really have to be precise. And you can play around with it a little bit. The only thing you really need to do is make sure that the you know, highlights are uh, you know, closer to white uh, or yellow as opposed to the uh, lower tones. It can be tempting to overblend when you're done um, because you want everything to be smooth. But I think it's better to be a little more conservative with that, otherwise you end up with a big pile of mud. When I'm done with oil, I usually set the model aside for a few days. It's probably a lot longer than is necessary, but I want to make sure that uh, it's completely set. I start by just kind of painting up some things that I didn't paint with oil. Uh, not because it didn't make sense to paint with oil. Uh, I just got tired and I didn't want to do it anymore, so I got lazy. I take a close facsimile of the kind of fur colors that I used with oil paints and I recreate that in acrylic and then I start adding a little bit more and more flesh color to it to work as highlights. I wanted there to be kind of a smooth transition from his fur to his more human-like hands. It was really tempting to splatter this with blood effects, but it seemed inappropriate given the material. And now I'm back to working on the gold, so most of what I need is there. At this point it's just refining. So into some of the deeper recesses I'm just putting in a little bit of Reichland Flesh Shade. Reichland? Reichland Flesh Shade. Nailed it. Um, and for the mid-tones, I'm glazing just with a regular orange citadel glaze. The more work you do in the oil paint stage, the less work you have to do here. So I end up having to do a lot more glazing than I would otherwise need to because of how much brown I left on the model. Although uh, the inside of that head circle that no one can actually see, I, I feel like I did a good job on that. I pretty much nailed it. I 
I found the face probably to be the most fun uh, painting this model. I pulled up a reference picture of a lion's face and it was a neat experiment to try to recreate that on this model. Uh, going back and forth, moving things around, trying different tones. At some point of filming this, I accidentally had my camera settings wrong and everything's all washed out and it kind of looks like he stuck his face in a big bowl of custard. Oh yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> Ooh. The main went pretty well too. I just sloshed on um, a lot of contrast paints after just throwing down some, honestly I don't even really know what I was doing. I was just throwing down some paint to try to get some different tones under the contrast when I put it down. I think it worked, like it looks okay, but I put a uh, darker contrast into the recesses uh, as well with a smaller brush. And then once everything was dried, I came back and then I just kind of highlighted up from there. Uh, let's call it controlled chaos. It worked. So remember when I said that I screwed up the pants? This, I know this looks insane, um, but I'm going back into the recesses that were too dark and painting them pink so that later when I airbrush them, um, they turn out orange and you'll see. Uh, for the wood, I'm painting in some really basic wood grain and then I'm going over that uh, with just a wood colored sepia ink uh, just to dumb it down a little bit and then you kind of end up having a subtle wood grain effect by the end of it. At this point I'm more just going back and forth fussing around with things, probably more things than are safe to show you in one video. Oh, well, here is a montage. We can just do a few finishing touches on the jewelry, and uh, I think we're done for now. For now. <laughs> <laughs>